Hey beautiful beaters, it's Gina from orchidandopal.com and today we're gonna to be making the Sanibel pendant. This was actually the first one I created. It was inspired completely by the contents of the Eureka Crystal Beads Flamingo Beach Collection. I like to challenge myself to try to come up with something new based on their monthly collections and that was it. So these two spun off of the beads used in this particular pendant and they really remind me of seashells and the beach, hence the name Sanibel. I love that beach so much, which is located in Southern Florida. I think something that really sets these off are the backlit gem duos that I have used in these particular designs. And this is a colorway testing out diamond duo. So you can use both of those beads in this design interchangeably. It seems like the diamond duos make it just the tiniest amount larger than the gem duo variety. Since this is a beach or ocean inspired pendant, I was also inspired to go with some blues and silvers for the tutorial we're gonna do today. You can find all the materials that you need for this tutorial at eurekacrystalbeads.com. And as always, I will include a full list of what I'm using today, as well as the links to where you can find these products right down below the video. As for a quick rundown of what we'll be using, I have two different colors of gem duos. You can see I have some backlit that I will be using around the center. The other variety, the navy, is going to be around the outside. The Moby duos are also something we'll be using, and those will take the place of these pink ones. You'll also need some 3mm Swarovski bicones and some 11 and 15 OC beads, as well as your chain and findings, of course. And besides that, your standard tools, your scissors, jewelry pliers, beading needle, and I will be using the 0 .006 inch 6 pound fire line, which is my go-to, but you can use the beading thread of your choice. Once you have about three to four feet of beading thread on your needle, the first step is to pick up six Moby duos and to join them together in a loop that's gonna form the very center of our pendant. And when you're picking those up, it doesn't matter which hole you start out with, as long as you are paying attention to what you are picking up after the first one. So you can see that these have a flat base and a rounded top, and I'm going to make sure the rounded tops are facing up, so I'm going through the right hand hole of these six Moby duos. So there are all six beads, all with the rounded part facing the same way. And I'm going to bring these down and leave myself a four to six inch tail that can be woven back in later. And I'm going to take my needle and swing back around and go through all of these Moby duos through the same hole that we went through before. And pull that, that's gonna form or begin to form our ring. And we actually need to go beyond where we started by at least one bead. Let's just go through the next two. And pull, and you can see this is the basis of the shape of our pendant and the very center. I like to think of this pendant as being completed in layers. So let's go to our next layer. We're gonna do that by stepping up to the next hole of our Moby Duo that we're currently coming out of. So we're gonna go in the opposite direction through that outer hole, pull your thread, and keep a tension on this. We don't have the thread knotted at this point. So you can just hang on to your tail thread or if you're more comfortable using a stop bead, you can do that as well. The next thing you wanna do is get the color of gem duo or diamond duo that you're gonna be using that is going to be more visible on the face of the pendant. So of course I'm going with the backlit because I want those to be primarily seen. And I'm going through the bottom hole of this gem duo with the front of that facing up towards me. And I'm gonna go through the next open hole of the Moby Duo that I get to and pull and just make sure your Gem Duo doesn't get twisted when you pop that in and that it's facing in the right direction. And we're gonna do this all the way around. So I'm picking up another Gem Duo from the bottom hole and I'm going through the outer or top hole of the next Moby Duo. Turn my work and do the same thing 
these backlit gem duos are going to be popping on this pendant, I think. And they come in all different colors. So just think of all the amazing color combinations that you can play around with. And I am on my last gem duo for this layer, picking that up and going through the top hole of the next Moby duo as well as the next gem duo. Give you that a good pull, make sure everything is facing in the correct direction and you have this little six pointed design so far. And something I like to do at this point is just tie a little half hitch knot. So try to keep these beads kind of flat. You don't want to pull them too tight. You just want to hold this together a little bit better as you go. So I'm just slipping underneath the thread bridge there between the Moby and the Gem Duo that I'm coming out of. And I'm going to tie a little half hitch knot right in that place. Then you can proceed through the next Moby Duo and Gem Duo. And you can step up to start working on the next layer of this pendant. You don't have to pull this too terribly tight yet where it's lifting up like that. Just kind of pull it tight enough to where everything is staying together, but this will start to take shape and we can always go back and reinforce later as needed. And what we're going to be adding in between these gem duos are the following sequence all the way around one Moby duo. And you want to make sure again that you have the rounded side pointing up. You're going to be going through the bottom hole of that bead. So take a minute just to figure out what that's going to look like. So bottom hole of Moby duo rounded side facing up. Then pick up one 15 one Gem Duo, this time in your other color, and you want to pick that one up from the bottom hole as well. Then pick up one more 15 and another Moby Duo, again, making sure you go through the bottom hole of that with the rounded side facing up so that you have a hole that's going to be open on the outer edge. And there's a look at what's going in between each of these gem duos. So we're going to repeat that step all the way around. So we'll go through the upper or outer hole of the next gem duo to pull those in. So let's do it again, picking up a Moby duo, a 15 the gem duo 15 also another Moby Duo. And then we're gonna slide through the next Gem Duo there at the top hole. And you can see our next layer starting to take shape. So let's keep going, I'm just setting that down because it's a little quicker for me to work that way. Moby, 15, Gem Duo, 15 -0. and Moby. And as you go, just make sure you have everything going in the right direction. I'm going to complete these other three sections and speed it up a little bit and we will meet back for the next step. So here is a look at what you should have so far. And what I also did was I popped a needle on my tail thread and just wove it around to get rid of that for purposes of the video, just to get out of the way. I didn't tie any more knots with it. I just went around and around till I used up the thread. That way the tension isn't too terribly tight so it can tighten naturally as we go because we still have more to do to cinch this up. So what we want to do now is start to work a little bit on the back. So we're going to flip our work over 
And we're also gonna be using our size 11 O seed beads at this point. And what I wanna do is I want to make my way to one of these Moby duos that is next to one of our outer gem duos. We're gonna be putting some seed beads in between this section all the way around. So stop right before you get to one of these 15 O's and you can pick up five 11 O seed beads. And we're gonna travel through the inner hole of the next Moby Duo. And if you can get through the next Gem Duo and the next Moby Duo, go for that as well. And then make sure as you're pulling that those 11 O's sit on the back of your piece just like that. So we will repeat by picking up five more 11 O's. And we're gonna head through the next Moby Duo, Gem Duo, and Moby Duo. Take your time and repeat. Five 11 O's. Moby Duo, Gem Duo, Moby Duo. And this is going to form some of the structure of this pendant on the back and also start to bring it all together and cinch it up. And going through the last Moby, Gem, and Moby. There we go. Then what we want to do is we want to make our way to the third 11 O in the next group of five of these that we get to. So I'm just gonna put my needle through these and come out of the third one, which is the top or middle in this group of five. And we wanna pick up four 15 O's and we're gonna be putting four 15 O's in between each of these groupings of 11 O seed beads going through the third of the next group of five and pulling that. And you can see that what this does is it starts to cinch our piece together. So repeat, one, two, three, four, 15 O's and go through the third of the next group of five, 11 O's, making sure that none of your beads get caught up when you do that. Now you don't have to pull too tight right now, just focus on getting those beads in place and then we will work on tightening that once this step is complete. And then once you get to the very last one, go through the third in the group of five but also continue going through all of these beads again. This is what's going to cinch up the back of the piece. So I'll just carefully pull this and you can see it's gonna form a ring of beads back there. So continue all the way around this ring of beads until you've gone just a little bit past where you started. And as you go, go through as many as you can at once and then keep tightening your piece. All right, so this is what the back of your pendant should look like so far. I'm coming out of the third 11 O in this group here. What we wanna do is we want to make our way back toward the front of the piece and back towards the Moby duos. So I'm just gonna pick this up and head down these other two 11 O's just like that. And I'm also going to go through the inner hole of that next Moby Duo because we want to make our way to the outer hole. This is going to hide the thread just a little bit better if I make my way in between those two. And I'm gonna go through the outer hole of the next Moby Duo, heading in the opposite direction. And we have some more beads to fill in these gaps in our very outermost ring. 
At this point, we will be using our three millimeter bicones and coming out of this grouping of two mobies, I'm gonna pick up the bicone and a 15-0 and then pass through the outer hole of the gem duo. And let me flip my work over so we're looking at this beautiful front. And then you're gonna pick up one 15-0 and one bicone and then pass through the next two Moby duos through the outer hole. Pull and repeat this all the way around. We will be going back around to add a little 15-0 to cover that spot up. But in the meantime, just keep repeating. So bicone 15-0 through the gem duo, then 15-0 and bicone and through the next two Moby duos. I think this is one of the best parts because this is when you really start to see the pendant taking shape. And just a couple more to go here. All right, and we are ending by going through the very next two Moby duos. Pull that. Let's set this down and take a look at it, admire it, and see how our piece is coming together. There's the back. And now this next step is going to reinforce our outer ring a little bit and also add another tiny detail. And what we wanna do is continue on. We wanna pass through the next three millimeter bicone and 15 seed bead, pass through the gem duo, Also pass through the next 15 three millimeter. And what you wanna do is you wanna to get to the next set of two or pair of Moby duos. And keep pulling tightly as you go. And we're gonna pick up one 15 and pop that right in between those two. So just pick up one 15 and proceed through the outer hole of the next Moby. And now repeat that step all the way around. So going through this outer ring, all over again, going through as many beads as you can at one time, and coming out of that pair of two Moby duos, picking up a 15 0 and going through the next Moby. So you can see those little 15 0s being popped in right there. So repeat that all the way around, and then we will meet back for the next step. All right, so we're looking good so far, and we're ready to add another level of detail. What we wanna do is make our way to one of the inner holes of the Moby duos we were just working with out here on the outer edge. And depending on the colors you're using and the color thread, if you wanna hide that best, like it might be good for me just to continue on and go through a gem duo and then step up to the inner hole like that. If your Moby duos better match your thread, you can just step up and go through a Moby duo. But the point is we want to make our way to this ring of beads right here. And I think I'm gonna proceed over until I get over to one of those darker navy blue gem duos. So I'm just going through that outer hole and then I'm going to step over to the inner hole of the gem duo. We're trying to get in here to the pair of Moby duos again to add some more seed beads in between those. Going through the 15-0 there, and then finally through the inner hole of the Moby duo right there, and we're gonna pop in four 15-0s in between the Moby duos. So proceed through your Moby, and then however many beads you can get through next, there's our four 15 O's, and you can see how they kind of wrap over the top of that inner gem duo. Going through the next 15 O and getting to the next two Moby duos. So four 15 O's and go through the next Moby duo and make your way to the next set of two. Once again, there's the four we just added. 
and just repeat this step all the way around until you have added four in between each of these pairs of two. And we have one more to go. And now we're gonna proceed through the same ring of beads one more time, but this time we're gonna add one more 15-0 in the center of the four 15-0s we just added to make a little peak. So keep going around, go through the first two 15 O's in that group of four that we just added, then pick up one more 15 O and head down through the next two 15 O's as well as the Moby, the next 15 O, the next gem duo and on and on. So just keep repeating this step and if you find that it's easier for you to switch to a size 12 or a smaller beading needle, you can certainly do that. Some of these spaces can be a little bit tight, so keep that in mind. Getting to my next pair, going up through those two 15 O's and picking up one more 15 O and heading down the next two all the way around the piece. So as you can see what that's doing, it's just creating these little points in the middle of each cluster of four. It's just another little detail, but we are getting to the end. Repeat that and we will meet back for the next step. Okay, we're at the final step of our detail. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be adding a V of 15 O's right in between each of the Moby duos in the very center. So we wanna make our way to one of the Moby duos one of the outer holes in that center ring. So in order to get to where we wanna go, I'm just following the thread path of my beads and trying to go through what makes the most sense. And for me, that's going to be going through one of these Moby duos to make my way to one of these gem duos and then step over to this ring. So I'm just going through this gem duo just for the purpose of Getting back in here toward our center, you can see I'm going down in the opposite direction with my needle. And then I'm also gonna go through the outer hole of one of these Moby duos. Now you're gonna pick up three 15 O's and step over to the next hole of the same Moby duo and pull. So now you have three 15 O's right there. Now also pass through the next hole of the Moby Duo that you get to and head back through the outer hole of that same one. Pick up three 15 O's and head back down through the other hole of the same Moby Duo. Head through the next inner hole of the Moby Duo and back through the same one through the other hole and repeat. So pick up three more 15 O's and head through the other hole of the same Moby Duo as well as the next one that you get to. Swinging back through the same Moby Duo, picking up three 15 O's back through that Moby Duo and through the next one. All the way around. There's my next three 15 O's, popping them into place. And as you can see, we just have one more little section there to add for this step. Going back through the same Moby Duo and adding in the final three 15 O's right there. Just going through the same Moby. And this time, now that we are back to where we started, we're gonna go through this 15 O at the very bottom, right next to the hole that we're coming out of. 
and we want to pick up two 15 O's and go through the top hole of the Moby Duo that we just came out of. And you can see that that formed the first little V right there. We want those in between each of these Moby Duos. Now let's pass down through the next three 15 O's that we get to. Then go through the same Moby Duo, go through the next Moby Duo, and go through that bottom 15 O and repeat. So pick up two more 15 O's, head back through the Moby Duo that you're just coming out of, down through the three 15 O's, and over two more Moby Duos. Head up through the bottom 15 O. Pick up two more 15 O's. Go back through the outer hole of the Moby Duo we were just coming out of. Down through the three. And over two more Moby Duos. Just keep repeating that to get yourself a little V in between each. And ending with our very last one. There we go. And that is the end of our detail and our beading. And now we are just ready to add our findings. I'm going to be adding a wire guard to the top of my pendant so that we can attach some chain and make this into a beautiful necklace. But that is it. You can see from all sides how nice that looks. And it finally cinched all together. All right, so I usually like to attach my wire guard in between two pairs of the outer Moby duos, kind of over the top of one of the gem duos on the outer edge. So what I did was I made my way just following the thread path to the outer edge of my beads. I'm coming out of this Moby duo right here, and I'm gonna pick up three 15 O's. My wire guard, and if you don't have a wire guard, you can just continue making a loop of seed beads. I'm going to go down through the other side of my wire guard and pick up three more 15 O's. And then I'm going to go through the outer hole of the next Moby Duo. Just like that. So you can see it popped in our wire guard. Then what I like to do is go all the way around the piece and reinforce the spot a couple of times. So whether you want to go through the whole outer ring again to get here and go through this, or if you want to take a shortcut, maybe turn around at a Moby Duo and do a smaller loop around, just reinforce this again since this is where it's going to be attaching to your findings. That's always a good practice. And then at that point, you can tie and knot off your thread and attach your chain. All right, guys, so here is the pendant all said and done and attached to some chain. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you and easy to understand. I can't wait to see all the different color combinations that you guys are inspired to create. So feel free to share those with me at any time. I really appreciate you being with me as always. And I hope you will stay tuned for much more to come. Until next time, I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your day, and as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidnoble.com. Thanks for watching.